So we've talked about some colorations of chords that we can do, mostly involving the third, as well as adding, uh, as adding the seventh of the chord and the ninth of the chord in a way that provides color without being muddy and without fundamentally changing the chord. But there are also uh, two other ways that you can alter chords in a way that works, but it actually does change the chord itself. The important qualification is this. It doesn't change the harmonies for the singers, for the congregation, it doesn't change the harmonies for the upper instruments, but it'll change the bass note, it'll, it'll change the note that your bass player would play. So it, they are actually different chords. There's two primary ways that you can add some variety here. The first are things that I call drop third chords. If you have a major, major triad, you can add to it a third below to create a minor seventh chord. It's kind of like the relative minor. If you know that the key of C has a relative minor, that is the key of A, minor. And so if whenever you have a major chord, you can add to it a relative minor. So let me give you an example. If I'm playing in the key of D, same pattern. What was once a D major chord now has become a B minor 7 chord. Let's try it with, with a G. If I'm given a G chord, I can drop it down to become an E minor 7. Uh, often where I'll use this is if I have maybe a repeated chorus or uh, maybe the last verse, and there might be a time where if I'm in the key of C, going to an F chord. Maybe instead of an F chord this time, I'm going to go from C not to an F, but to a D minor 7. Again, I call this dropping the third. I had a major chord, I add a third below to create a minor 7. Again, it does change your bass, so it is a different chord, but your guitarist can continue to play in that major chord. Your bass note will just need to change. Your singers can sing the same parts that, they, that they've been singing. Uh, your other melody instruments. Everything about the chord remains the same. You just add a third below to create a different bass. So that's one kind. The other kind is what I call the drop fifth. It provides an alternate harmony with more of a static feel. Let me give an example. If I'm going to play, I'll say in the key of E flat, drop down a fifth. So this drop fifth idea provides an alternate harmony with more of a static feel. You see that you can move back and forth between the, four, between the one if I keep all the elements of the chord the same, now I'm, now I'm left with actually, it, it's, a, it's a major 9 chord. So there is a little bit of richness there, but you can, again, you can voice it in such a way. That's pleasing, it's not muddy at all. Again, the drop fifth requires your bass player uh, to be aware of what you're doing. He needs to move with you, but your other instruments can, can, can continue to play in your original. So in E flat, my guitar, my guitar player is probably going to be capoing on one and playing a D. A D5 for him is pretty easy to play. He'll just keep playing that. So I have two options here. I can go down to a drop third, forming a C minor seven. Static harmony would be this. So those are two ways that you can provide some more harmonic richness, variation, without really changing a lot of members of the chord. Okay, it's your turn. Let's play the following progression in the key of G. Keep it simple, just whole note chords. 
pause the video and uh, try out some different variations and then I'll play an interpretation of it. I'm going to play G, E minor, C, G, D, E minor, C.